Hello and welcome to The Holistic Way. I'm Todd Hart, I'm the host of the show. And today I'm very excited to welcome Alex Zima to the show. Alex, welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, why don't you take a moment to introduce yourself and uh, let people know what you, uh, what you do. Absolutely. Uh, I work for a local fitness and wellness company here in the region. And uh, my background actually is in education. And I'm a certified yoga instructor. And I do a lot of work locally with youth groups and a few school-based meditation groups as well. And uh, I've done a fair amount of workplace meditation programming as well with my own coworkers, with others. And uh, I have, do have a private meditation coaching practice locally based in Rumford mm -hmm. as well, which we can talk about a little bit more later. But uh, I'm very happy to be here. Awesome. Welcome. Um, how would you describe mind mindfulness med meditation? How would, how would you describe that to us? Mindfulness meditation, it's, these are you know, terms that are, have really become very well known recent, in recent years. And uh, mindfulness meditation at its most basic is a way, a training method for the mind to not so much um, calm the mind consciously, but a cognitive ex set of exercises to allow us to be present in the moment, to come outside the stream of habitual thinking, come outside the stream of reactive thinking, and really sort of that allows the mind to slow down. So whether it's a sitting practice or a movement-based practice like yoga or a mindful approach to jogging, for example, um, it's a way of, of focusing our awareness so that we start to develop a broader sense of the present moment and a more rooted sense of the present moment. Does this practice spill over into your day-to-day -day life, working, raising your family, being with your, your husband, wife, does, yeah. that, does it spill over? Yeah, very much so. Um, in fact, the, the true practice is really in full, in full life, in, in the flow of life. So we practice sitting or we practice in specialized environments where we can master, or gain some mastery over, over the flow of the mind and gain some mastery over these techniques. But the real practice is when we take it out into the world and when we're challenged with you know, mm. uh, conflicting information, uh, fast changing, fast changing in environments, fast changing conditions, that's really when this practice um, becomes very valuable for us. And that's really where, where we really learn to fully meditate. So it's like a boxer training to fight the fight is sort of life when you're actually in the fight and you're boxing. That's where you're training really to see how good you really are. Exactly. So it's sort of like that. Interesting. Exactly. Now, is it a fit for any personality, any physical type? Can, can anyone do this? The general answer is, of course, yes. I think there may be people who are more drawn to meditation and maybe find it a little easier and might be naturally drawn to it. Sitting meditation, I think it's something that you should come to organically and not force it. So if it doesn't feel natural, there may be other, maybe exercise might be your form of meditation. But the general orientation is something that can be applied to any, any activity, any set of personality types, any set of hob you know, hobbies or interests. Um, again, we learn kind of in a, in a formal way, but then we can apply it in other ways. Um, but in essence, anyone can learn the practice. Um, even people with physical limitations or physical differences, you don't have to sit in a specific posture. It can be done sitting, standing, um, lying down, uh, mm. or, or in the more traditional sense, on the floor, on a pillow, the way we're, we're used to seeing it. Um, but really, anybody can really practice some form of mindfulness meditation. Now, some people think that meditation is a religion or it has religious roots. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yes. Um, at its most fundamental, mindfulness is simply a function of the human mind and body. So it's something, forms of meditation or the valuing of silence and the valuing of periods of, of that, that allow the mind to, to calm down and center are seen throughout every, every culture, whether it's before certain rites of passage. So there's a, rec a universally recognized aspect of the mind that is naturally still, that is there all the time, that we just have to allow to emerge. So meditation can come up in many different cultures and many different religious contexts as well, but much like dance and art, hmm. it can be found in a religious context, but it's also just an aspect of what human beings, what human beings do and something that most human cultures have somehow stumbled upon and, mm. dis and discovered. Okay, and, and I should mention that you do have a website, so why don't you go ahead and give your website in case anyone wants to do some research or reach out and talk to you. Absolutely, I'd be happy to give anyone further information or talk about consulting, et cetera. Uh, my website is www.alexzima.com. That's A-L-E-X, Z as in zebra, I, M as in Mary A, alexzima.com. Okay, um, and how is meditation related to relaxation? Very good question. So we live in a very kind of 
hyper-energized society, relaxation, stress is something that's very important to people, a very important topic, medically important, socially important. Um, it's, stress is tied to many, many diseases and many disease states. So relaxation or de-stressing has become a very important topic. Meditation and mindfulness is often uh, considered a tool toward relaxation or toward counteracting stress. And there's a real truth to that, um, but it goes a bit further. So in relaxation, it's really, um, relaxation is generally allowing the body and the mind to settle down, um, to kind of initiate a relaxation response, which is part of the meditative process. But mindfulness meditation takes it a few steps further as a real cognitive process. So the first stages, which we'll do in the demo today, mm -hmm. are relaxing the body and the mind at that basic level, but then allow, allows us to go sort of into a slightly deeper level of mindful awareness that can continue to grow and cultivate it, even once we've sort of mastered a basic level of relaxation. No, I, I know that from, we're friends and, and we know each other uh, a long time now and we're also Facebook friends and I've seen some of the posts that you put up yep. about uh, there's been medical studies that have shown uh, a decrease in certain brain activity, maybe cortisol levels. So can yes. you talk about any of the medical side of this, the benefits that people have received from meditating? Yes, the, the interesting thing about the last 10 to 12 years is that there's been a huge spike in funding for medical research of mindfulness and meditation. Um, before that, there was very, very little. So there's a lot of clinical work going on right now, um, up at Harvard, up at different, different universities throughout the country actually. Very well lauded studies are really underway. The, um, what some initial findings are that the simple act of focusing on the breath and sort of retreating to a more sort of open state of mind immediately begins to elicit what's called medically, biologically, the relaxation response. Cortisol levels reduce in the bloodstream, adrenaline levels start to reduce. You can see changes in patterns of breathing and heart rate. All of those are extremely beneficial in counteracting physical and emotional stress. Um, Recent advances in brain imaging have shown some evidence still being investigated that there's actual structural changes in the brain during meditation. One is actual physical changes where the um, uh, certain layers of the brain actually can become thicker, ones that generally become thinner hmm. as people age. So that's very promising for future brain science and the science of aging. Um, but also they've seen different patterns in the way the brain, different parts of the brain communicate to each other. Very few functions in the brain are controlled by one area. They tend to be they tend to be sort of coordinated among various areas. Mm -hmm. And what happens in the process of mindfulness meditation rather effectively is that the reactive part of the brain, the part that is uh, sort of implicated in um, anxious thinking, um, uh, you know, repetitive thinking, or sort of cycles of, of, of you know, um, anxiety, mm -hmm. is quieted. And that the aspects of the brain that allow you to see more broadly, that allow you to feel more connected to everything, less, less, you know, less sort of isolated, actually sort of expand, and activity in those areas tends to increase. Has there been any studies on either uh, depression or Alzheimer's disease with uh, elderly people? Yes, there are. There are currently many studies going on throughout the country and in globally, even as locally as Brown University, mm. on depression, anxiety. Um, heart disease, there are several local studies on heart disease as well. And so, um, yeah, I mean, if, if you do, if you were to do a Google search on medical research and mindfulness meditation, you'd find a lot of very, very legitimate um, research in progress. Now, it's still a very new field, and scientists are very cautious about drawing um, concrete conclusions, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of promising, there's a lot of promising evidence out there. Cool. I actually heard someone speak recently, and they said that most people, <clears throat> most Americans anyway, tend to spend our lives in that fight or flight where we're in the yes. flight where we it's like the lions chasing us through the, the forest and right. or through the the woods whatever and and we're you know we're not digesting our food we're not sleeping well we're just worried about escaping the lion right. and so our bodies are a mess we're constantly the cortisol levels are flying so i would think that this would help everybody if everyone's experiencing that it's it's a it's a huge positive, and I think uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a reason why this has become so it's become so mainstream. Even companies are starting to really incorporate you know mindfulness practice. Google has a, a, a CMO, a, a, you know, a, a bit like a CEO, but for mindfulness, and <laughs> they run a, a full mindfulness curriculum that's voluntary, but throughout all of their sites. And uh, it's really being, it, it, people recognize that this allows us to live better, more fully, but also perform better, if that's our sure. ultimate goal. Sure. And so Americans are chronically sleep deprived. We're like the most sleep deprived culture there is. We have the, the, the fewest vacation days, et cetera. And um, you know, part of that's our, our, our culture. 
and part of that's laudable, um, but we are a, a pretty chronically stressed out society. And so we, there's this culture of striving or the sense that you always have to strive to get ahead. But the fact is that sometimes you, you get ahead by pulling back. Right. You know, getting ahead is not always moving forward. I always imagine a natural landscape. You're moving toward a mountain, you're climbing up a mountain. There's times to reach for the next rock, but there's times to make a base camp and rest and mm -hmm. wait out a storm. There's times to mm -hmm. sleep at night. So just that's, that's the terrain of life. We, we, we proceed, but then also sometimes progress means retreating a little bit when we see sure. the mountain lion. You know, so there's, sure. so it's, not, it's not just the forward motion. It's a good analogy. Yeah. Um, are there any downsides to mindfulness meditation? Well, mindfulness meditation, if done intensely, and I think um, you know, it does have to be done with caution, anyone can have a very basic mindfulness practice where you learn how to just kind of tune in, um, get some basic relaxation, et cetera. If you are considering, though, m much longer retreats or very involved practices that, that involve you know, hours and hours of meditation, definitely do it under the guidance of an experienced meditation teacher. And certainly, if anyone's had any kind of medical or psychiatric issues in the past, always do it under the guidance of, a, of, a, of, their, of, of their clinician. Um, because it can release powerful emotions. Um, it can sort of, you know, um, when you remove some of the, the habitual thinking, other things may, may be revealed. So it's important mm. to proceed um, with a bit of self-care and a great amount of compassion for oneself. Good advice, good advice. Um, how long does it take to learn to meditate or to, to master something like this? The basic technique, really anyone can learn in, in a few minutes. The, the magic and the key of meditation is in the consistency mm -hmm. and in not perceiving the need necessarily for a goal. So mastery is really, it's an open-ended path. There's no final, there's really no final mastery, but you can achieve a sense of regularity and you can achieve a sense of, um, you can start to feel the benefits really within even a couple of weeks. And even, even some of the science shows uh, you know, some significant changes even within eight weeks of a, med a basic meditation practice. And how much time should someone spend per day? Not should, but yeah. would you recommend can. they spend per day? That's a, great, that's a great question. I mean, ideally building up to about a 20 minute daily practice or three days a week is, is great. Even five minutes a day of a basic practice is really is a good, excellent way to start. For people who are a little more antsy and may not be able to sit that long, even three minutes is actually mm. a great way to start. And to build it up progressively, much like a couch to 5K running program. And so, um, so starting with five minutes a day and building up to 20 minutes if possible mm -hmm. is a really good, 20 minutes is a really good sweet spot. Um, and with meditation, it's more important to be consistent than to do it fewer times but more intensely. So it's, it's much more valuable to do five minutes a day consistently than to do three hours every Saturday. Mm, okay. And do postures play a role in the effectiveness of the meditation? Interesting, yes. Or positions? Absolutely, in the sense that, you know, I like to tell people there's really no magical position for meditation. So we see people sitting in lotus position or on the floor. A lot of that is because in the Asian cultures where that have sort of mastered meditation, that's the way people actually just sat. So had they been sitting in chairs, we may be just sitting in chairs and meditating. <laughs> so, um, but there's a bit of a mystique and an aura around sitting in a certain position. However, there is, it is important to sit in an upright position to allow proper breath mm -hmm. and also to cultivate that sense of uh, sort of nobility, that sort of inner sense of, of poise. Um, a kind of like soft nobility. So posture is important in that sense, you know, f sort of in an, orga in an organic sense. Uh, we have a, uh, about a minute and a half left for the interview part, and then okay. when we come back, where uh, Alex is actually going to lead us in a guided meditation for maybe 10 to 15 minutes. Um, it'll just be Alex on camera, and you'll be leading us, which I'm, I'm looking forward to. I'll be off camera doing it, so I'm excited about that. Great. Um, if you have any questions for the show, uh, the email address for the show is theholisticway at hotmail.com. It should be appearing on the screen. And if you have any ideas for a future show, if there's certain guests that you'd like to see or topics covered, feel free to write to the show, and we'll gladly get back to you. Um, any f uh, closing thoughts on guided meditation before we take a break and go into the other part of the show? I would say just follow along and sort of explore, see what happens. Don't try to really make anything happen, and just uh, you know, be as natural as you can. Great. Looking forward to it. Thank you for being on the show. Looking forward to the next part. Thank you. Uh, we'll be back after this. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'd like to take, to take you all through a guided meditation today. This is a simple practice that anyone with some basic guidance can actually start to use in their daily life 
and gain a bit of awareness, calm, and sense of restoration in their daily life. So with meditation, and mindfulness meditation in particular, the alignment of the body is important. It doesn't matter if you're sitting in a chair, sitting on a cushion, or even lying down. The key is to have an alignment where you can really breathe fully into the body deeply, as deeply as the belly, or even into the base of the spine. And you also want to have the head in an upright position. So the guidance is usually to imagine that a string is holding you up through the top of your head as if you were a little lead weight. Dropping the chin slightly allows the back of the neck to open. And as you breathe, inhaling under the heart allows the breath to become our ally to develop an upright posture. So we don't wanna to be too rigid. We don't wanna to be too slack. We wanna find a comfortable middle ground. Let the heart be balanced not too far forward, not too far back, but balanced right over the pelvis. The key to meditation, even if it's a new practice for us, it may feel contrived at first, is to make it as natural as possible, to feel as comfortable in your skin as you can. So once we have these alignments, simply allow your mind to come to the breath, finding the inflow and the outflow of the breath. And so the attention may wander off the breath at various points in the practice whenever you remember to or are guided to simply come back to the breath. Let's continue with opening the body a bit to really establish the body presence, then the breath, and then finally, the mental practice. Take an inhale, lift under the heart. Drop your head down, and we'll do a few neck rolls here. Turning first in one direction and allowing the head to be very heavy. Letting the head turn at every point in the compass. We learn the art of undoing, of letting go. So the neck may try to hold the head upright. Breathe and let the neck go as much as you can so the head hangs as heavy as it can. And then bring the head in the opposite direction. Again, letting it be as heavy and as relaxed as it can. And then inhaling, exhaling. Let's inhale the shoulders up to the ears, exhale them back and down. So we release the tension in the body so that it does not become a distraction or an impediment to our mindfulness practice. About three shoulder rolls should do inhaling and exhaling. And then stretching the hands out, release the palms. Inhale up. Exhale down to the sides. Once again, inhale up. Big inhale, filling the lungs with oxygen. Exhale back. And then inhale up. Exhale down. Now these postures can be done in any chair, even at your office with a few moments. And then one last posture here. We'll take a gentle twist, and then we'll be prepared for our sitting practice. So take a big inhale under your heart once again. Reach one hand to the opposite knee. Reach one hand around the back of a chair, perhaps. Whatever's comfortable. Inhale. And then exhale gently. Without over twisting, just to explore the range of motion. Inhale here. And exhale. Opposite side. Prepare the arms and the hand. Inhale. Reach up under the heart. Fill the body with oxygen. And exhale. Breathe for a moment. Big inhale under the heart. And exhale. So we're opening and lengthening the body. The act of breathing deeply and watching our breath itself begins to elicit the relaxation response. 
and I often describe this as sort of clearing away the first layer of tension. So sometimes we identify with physical tension, physical discomfort, and we think it's a mental or an existential discomfort, but it may just be stored static in the body. So we want to first clear away that layer so they can really deal with the real stuff, not just the normal residue of a life. So now that we've stretched a bit, we begin to deepen the breath. Find that comfortable position so you're not too far forward or too far back. Drop the chin as before, lifting through the back of the neck. And you can let your eyes kind of cast down, gently almost close, but allowing some light to enter. But if it's preferable for you to have your eyes completely closed, you can do so. Mindfulness really works well with the eyes slightly open so that you can maintain a relationship with the real world. Because ultimately, this is a real world practice that we take off the chair, off the pillow, off the mat, and into our daily lives. But whatever's comfortable for you, simply bring that gaze either again through almost closed eyes or closed eyes, <clears throat> begin to find the breath. Find the cool sensation of the breath as it enters the body. So not the concept of the breath or not the visualization of the breath per se, the actual physical experience. Inhaling and exhaling. The breath ties our body and mind together and we, bring, we come to these physical sensations as a way of being in the present moment. Inhaling and exhaling. So as you breathe, which happens automatically, just like the rhythms of nature, the mind will continue to cycle through thinking. There'll be sensations in the body, perhaps sounds in your environment. Allow all of these things to happen so we're not trying to get into a place where we have no stimulus, but simply come back to the breath every time the mind has wandered or every time you notice the mind has wandered because that is the point of awakening. Inhaling and exhaling. The hands can be placed cradled in the lap or on the thigh, palm down, palm up, really whatever is most comfortable for you and whatever is most organic. Continue breathing, allow the body to breathe naturally, following the inhale fully, right to the top of an inhale. Notice that small gap just before you begin to exhale. The inhale will be cool, maybe a little sharper. See where the nerve endings are. Where in the nostrils do you feel these, this inflow of breath? Also notice the fullness of the breath as you exhale. Warmer, fuller, maybe more subtle. Soften around the eyes. Soften the mouth into a gentle very subtle Mona Lisa smile just to relax the face and even a gentle smile begins to release endorphins in the brain. Breathing, inhaling and exhaling, simply noting what is, not trying to be particularly relaxed, not trying to stop thinking, but what happens as we observe the breath, as we allow the body and mind to wind through and to settle, we notice that it begins to settle of its own accord, inhaling and exhaling. At first, you may feel more energy. You may feel a little antsier. But in time, like a fever breaking, in time with observation, the mind will start to settle down. Inhaling and exhaling. A foundational principle is that the state of balance is already within us. We simply allow it to emerge. Inhaling 
and exhaling. Like a pond, when there is no wind, it is the nature of water to become smooth like glass. Similarly, the mind, without additional stimulation or analysis, begins to settle and over time takes on a clean, mirror-like surface. Inhaling and exhaling. Take a few moments to follow the breath into and out of the body. Enjoy the present moment. Enjoy the sense of being alive. Enjoy the sense of exploration. Inhaling and exhaling. Our lives are an experiment with our name on it. Meditation is the same. So we approach it with a great curiosity, but also a great compassion for ourselves. Thoughts come and go. Some are positive. Some are not so positive. Sometimes we feel energized. Sometimes we feel tired. By breathing in and out through all these states, we develop a great sense of acceptance for ourselves, for the changes we go through day to day, and we develop a bigger sense of forgiveness, a greater sense of forgiveness for ourselves, for being human, and start to appreciate simply being alive. Inhaling and exhaling. If the body has come down a little bit with gravity, gently lift it with the next in-breath, developing a sense of nobility, of gentle poise, inhaling and exhaling. Breathing in, breathing out. Practicing the simple technique, even five minutes a day, is a great way to start. And to end, we begin to wiggle our fingers, stretch our hands, wiggle the neck. Take a deep breath, open the eyes, and ready to start your day. Thank you all very much for joining the show. Happy to see you.